The internet. It's the center of nearly everything we do in the 21st century. It has the power to cause an uprising in the Middle East and the influence to sway a presidential election. But how did we get here? When you have tools as accessible and easy to use as the ones we do today, it becomes increasingly easy to understand why we've decided to move in this direction. Just with a couple of clicks, I can see exactly what monument or street looks like on the other side of the world. In another scenario, I can read curated news directly from my bed without even having to go outside to pick up a paper. The backbone behind these tools stems from one ubiquitous, simple, yet genius invention, HTML. Today, we're gonna dive into the rich history of how humanity went from writing hello world to designing incredibly complex tools like Google or Facebook. The 90s was a volatile yet exciting time for the history of the web. HTML was designed in 1990 by Tim Berners-Lee at CERN, and the first web page was created in 1992. The design and interaction with these web pages was anything but fancy. However, it did what it needed to do in the early days, and that was to display easy to read content on a static document. The standard web page in the early 90s consisted solely of hyperlinks and static text with no more structure than that of a plain text document. As time passed, requests for new ways to customize an HTML document resulted in the creation of the HTML table tag in 1994. It was showcased on the Mosaic browser, but soon after it made its way to all other mainstream browsers at the time. It offered new ways to structure a web page. Instead of text-based formatting, developers were now allowed the freedom to create new elements such as sidebars, headers, and even grid views. Besides the structure though, there was still no other way to add fancy graphics and fonts to web pages of the time. That issue was solved through the invention of Macromedia Flash in 1995, which eventually became Adobe Flash later on. The core software was originally designed to power a sketching application. However, it was later found to be a great tool for adding rich graphical media to websites. Developers began to create entire websites using only Flash, but a problem surfaced pretty quickly. At this point, the idea of user-centered design systems was non-existent. This resulted in more than just a few ugly websites. Take Space Jam as an example. Backgrounds of this era tended to consist of a tile image that repeated until it filled the screen. Colors often clashed, resulting in nearly unreadable text. Couple that with designs that are often different across the site, and the problem becomes increasingly apparent. But, thankfully, as the web and its technologies matured, so too did its design principles. CSS and JavaScript became increasingly popular for creating dynamic websites using native browser tools, but people still continued to use Adobe Flash widely throughout the web as the go-to source for interactive media like games and live streams. And then, in 2007, the iPhone was released. An iPod. A phone. This is one device. And we are calling it iPhone. Today, Apple is going to reinvent the phone. Along with a letter in 2010 by Steve Jobs signing a death warrant for Adobe Flash. If you ever have this thing running fast, come back and show us, which they never did. And, uh, but, but we think we're not going to use it. And that was it. And we shipped the iPhone, and it doesn't use Flash. And it wasn't until we shipped the iPad and it didn't use Flash that Adobe started to raise a stink about it. HTML5, CSS3, and JavaScript were the only technologies allowed on these mobile devices for power and efficiency reasons. And for the fact that websites built with Adobe Flash couldn't be tracked by search engines and therefore ranked Flash websites lower. The one thing that set these native browser tools apart from Flash wasn't the efficiency though. It was the fact that they could display dynamic content that looked great on any size screen. Enter the era of responsive web design. The idea was that by shifting, shrinking, and flexing certain UI elements around, you could effectively write code once and use it anywhere. While initial browser support was lacking, and still falls short on browsers like Internet Explorer 11 and below, we're nearly completely transitioned to this new design philosophy with big companies like Microsoft using it in its universal Windows platform, and Google with its material design system. Common developers now have access to user-tested and scientifically-backed design principles, which has resulted in an influx of user-friendly web applications. 
So what's next for the web? It seems like nearly every couple of months, a brand new way of creating a more advanced web application appears. In just the past three years, we've seen a dramatic shift in the way programmers are designing websites. Facebook's React.js and Google's AngularJS, coupled with hundreds of thousands of developer-created packages, have made programming desktop-grade applications on the web so much more robust. It also means that websites will now, more than ever, be sharing their design patterns and positively affecting the end user. We don't really know what will happen in the next years, but I'm confident that we'll continue our trend toward a better user experience for the modern human.